we are tracking rental fees for play fields in Oakland. And we have one, two, three Excel tables. And we want to consolidate them or append them, stacking them one on top of the other on the master sheet. Now in the olden days, before we had Power Query, we had to do this with array formulas. And guess what? I have lots of videos, and you can search my channel if you want to do it the hard way. But since Excel 2013, we have Power Query. And we have one, two, three Excel tables. And we're going to use the amazing Excel.CurrentWorkbook function. Now what this function will do is it will import all of the tables and also all of the other objects. So we have a lookup table, and I definitely want it in this workbook. So we'll have to somehow exclude that. And we also have a defined name. In addition, there'll be one other easy to deal with problem. If we consolidate all of that data on this sheet right here, Power Query exports it as an Excel table. So later when you refresh, It'll try to refresh itself, meaning the records will double. And again, there's a simple solution for that. Now I'm going to use Alt F12 to open up the Power Query editor. And here it is. And instead of doing a new blank query and typing the code, i got to show you a great trick when you're using Excel.CurrentWorkbook. Notice we have a table here, and we could go up to Data, Get and Transform. And if I click From Table Range, it uses the Excel.CurrentWorkbook function. Now, you can click that button, but I'm using the keyboard. you got to find the right-click key on your keyboard, right-click G. That's the fast way to import an Excel table. X out, Change Type. And look it up in the formula bar, Excel.CurrentWorkbook. All of that is looking up amongst all the objects in this Excel workbook that particular table. So instead of using that, I'm just going to delete the lookup part, delete and enter. And now we have just Excel.CurrentWorkbook, which is programmed to import. And if I click here, wow, there's the table. Right here, we want to exclude this and that defined name. Now, normally, when I use Excel.CurrentWorkbook, I make sure I only have tables in the workbook I'm using. But in this case, I need these two objects. So no problem. I come up to the dropdown. And when I uncheck both of these, we're going to look up in the formula bar at the code it writes. Click OK. Table.SelectRows is like the filter function in Excel. And it says I'm going to exclude from the name column code and lookup. Notice it says not. That means if we add any more field tables later, those will be imported and incorporated. Now we have two steps, and we want to consolidate. So this is amazing. And guess what? We have the actual table name, which we want in each row of our resulting table. So when I click the Expand button, I definitely want, do not want to use the original column name content. I just want all of these columns. Now one other thing, when you're doing this, the structure of each table better be the same. That means they have the same number of columns. The field names are all the same. Click OK. And that is a thing of beauty. Now I'm going to close this. And we can see we have all of our fields. Now I'm going to select the first one, Shift, click the last one, go up to Transform. Detect data types. Now, it actually didn't work, but it added a step. So now I'm just going to change the ones I want. Click data type icon, and I want date. It's going to ask me if I want to replace, which means it'll amend the code for that step. Replace, start time, shift, end time, right click, change type, and that should be time. Replace. Now, let's name this, because this name is going to be really important. I'm going to call it Master Fee Table. Now, normally, I just filter this name out, because like I said, when we export this to the worksheet, it ends up being an Excel table. But I do want to show you what happens and how you can tell that there's a table you don't want before you get into trouble. So we go to Home, Close and Load, 
close and load to, existing, master, B2, click OK. Go over to master, and that's how you can tell. There's a ghost row. If I were to, and I'm going to show you this, right click, refresh, everything doubles. So we don't want that. So we go back up to our query, double click. And you could add an extra step here by going to the name column and just filtering it out. But I'm going to go back to filter rows. And I can see the code up here. And all I need is name and that. I'm going to copy just because I don't like typing. At the end, the AND operator in Power Query is lowercase and, Control V, click over here, double click, copy. Click up in the formula bar, double click, Control V, and Enter. Now if I go to the last step, no longer do I have it. When I close and load, I no longer have the duplicate records, and there is no ghost row. Now let's make a pivot table. Select a single cell, insert pivot table from table range, or use the keyboard Alt NVT, existing J2, click OK. Enter, fee, add some number formatting, click OK. Now we're going to notice that ABC amount because I'm going to add a new record. This is an Excel table, so I type 1 slash 9. When I hit Tab, the formatting carries down. This is for ABC. They rented it from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. That formatting is wrong. Go up to the drop down in general. I'm not quite sure how that happened. 250. When I come over to Master, I don't see it here, but right click Refresh. And sure enough, there it is. Pivot table, right click Refresh. And bam, everything updates. Now here's your bonus. The goal of this video was to create a master table. But what if you didn't need the master table? You just wanted to analyze one, two, three tables in a pivot table. Well, watch this. I'm going to highlight everything, all of this. Home, clear all. That clears everything, the data, the query, the pivot table, the formatting. Or you can use the keyboard, Alt-E-A-A. -A. It says I'm going to delete some queries and other things, so I'm going to click Yes. Now look what happens up here, connection only. Right click, Load to. Now it's just keeping the query, but it hasn't loaded it anywhere. And instead of loading it as an Excel table, I'm going to load it as a pivot table. I don't want it in A1. I want it in B2. Click OK. Now I have renter fee, some number formatting. And now there's an added benefit to this. If I come over and add a new record, 1 slash 10, Control apostrophe to copy the thing directly above, tab. I'm going to do the same thing, Control apostrophe tab, Control apostrophe. And the benefit of going over to this master sheet is now I don't have to right click the table and the pivot table. I just right click refresh, and bam, everything's updating. All right, that's a little bit about how to use Excel.CurrentWorkbook, an amazing Power Query function to consolidate multiple tables either into a single table, then a pivot table report, or just into a pivot table. All right, we'll see you next Excel magic trick.